Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of CSK News. It's going to be a drama packed episode for the first time in a long time. I don't usually cover drama stories on this channel, but you know, why not every once in a while? So first off, for our first story, I do want to talk about McSkillet pretty much against every other CSGO YouTuber out there right now. I'm going to mention some big names. So after this first story, I want you all to do me a favor. Please comment down below whose side are you on, who do you agree with, and give me your reason why. So to set the premise of this actual story a long time ago, actually last month, you guys remember most likely McSkillet releasing this video talking about other case opening websites like Drake Moon as well as Skin Hub, mainly targeting websites like Hellcase for how sketchy they are and how much of an edge they actually have. So pretty much telling us all, if you go and use these websites, you're going to lose money. And then coincidentally, in that same video, he actually released his own case opening website, which many of you guys now know about. And of course, this was met with a lot of backlash, not from you guys, the community. A lot of you guys actually like his website because it might be one of the lower house edge, edge websites out there. But besides that, a lot of backlash from other YouTubers and for good reason. And now Trillix, actually what big YouTuber his channel on screen for all of you, kind of restarted the Twitter beef a few days ago. After many weeks ago, it was actually Tweet A who started the original beef and then eventually was blocked by McSkillet. So Trillix kind of refired everything up. He sent out this tweet just a couple days ago to McSkillet. You guys obviously can read the text there. I'll show the screenshots on screen. Many of McSkillet's tweets were actually deleted thanks to my guy Beaver Boy who actually grabbed the screenshots for us before they were deleted. So I'll show you guys some of those tweets on screen. We also had Tweet A and Jeff get back into it. Of course, Mr. Tweet A though was actually already blocked by McSkillet so he can't see the tweets. That's why he actually posted that. And of course, Jeff, if you guys know, I talked about him a couple days ago. He's one of the few CSGO YouTubers out there who has yet to take any gambling sponsors. So he has a great word in this. And on top of that, we also had Bibinator get involved. Bibinator and actually another huge CSGO YouTuber. He also went back and forth between himself and McSkillet saying some big things there. Who knows what was actually said between these two and then the personal DMs or other or other forms of communication. Apparently McSkillet calling him a C-U-N-T. And of course, McSkillet saying things like this kind of does not come off too well in my own personal eye, but I want to give you guys my overall overall opinion about the situation here. So McSkillet kind of sounds overconfident. A lot of the things he says on Twitter is are definitely held against him, especially when he says them and then deletes them. But the overall thing about the, the, the situation is the fact that this McSkillet tore down other case opening websites to promote his own case opening website. He now has a gambling site uh, alongside this. He has another gambling website known as CSGO Arcade. He has his case opening website and a skin trading website. A lot of things he's trying to make money from, and I understand that mindset. He's a very smart guy. Talking to him in the DMs for a few times, I haven't really talked to many other YouTubers out there. He's definitely a smart guy and he definitely knows what he's doing, but the way he went about it was probably not the best tactic, and I'm sure he had to expect some sort of backlash, especially when he targets specific people like Bibinator because Bibinator is actually a hell case sponsored YouTuber, that's his main sponsor, and that's why they went back and forth too. And so, obviously, what probably wasn't the best promotional strategy to tear down other case opening websites, although his case opening website might have the smallest house edge of any case opening site out there, it does not stop the fact that other YouTubers are probably trying to get at McSkillet for. The fact is, you now own a gambling website and you make money primarily off your viewers. Now, I get it. The fact that if I were to take a sponsorship with a gambling site or anyone else out there like Trillix or Tweet A, if they took a gambling sponsor, they would still be making money off their viewers, but now you have a direct line of money coming in from your viewers. And that's how I see it. I see it as McSkillet now owning his own gambling website. Although it might be the smallest edge possible, he has an edge over you guys whenever you play on his website. And that's how I never really liked this whole gambling thing. Although I have had sponsors in the past, that's how I feel. I think McSkillet is very smart, but the way he went about this whole thing, it had to expect backlash from the YouTubers. And it seems right now and going forward, every other YouTuber out there that I've seen so far has a very strong disliking for him for doing this. So kind of a, a weird situation to be in. The Twitter beef continues. We'll see what comes out of this in the next few days, guys. But it seems it's McSkillet versus everybody else right now. Whose side are you on? I know McSkillet's a very smart guy, but I do question his promotional strategy. And other CSGO news out there I wanted to bring to all of your attention. I was actually having a CSGO news live stream last week and someone told me a new investment strategy. So for all of you who are interested in my own investments, I told you several skins out there that I invest in. I want to share this with you. The possibility of a new CSGO investment Although it's very, very long term, I thought it was very cool. A lot of people out there do not know about this. You can actually invest into CSGO Operation Passes. Now, most of these passes have been $5.99, $5.99 originally when they first come out. Obviously, our last one being Operation Hydra. And as you guys can see on screen, we have ones like Vanguard and other ones who have almost uh, surpassed $100 in prices. Obviously, Vanguard, I believe, back to year 2014. So, obviously, a very, very long term investment. But people actually do take the time to buy CSGO Operation Passes 
and eventually they do always go up in price because obviously once the operation is actually done or has actually concluded you can no longer buy that pass for $5.99 and so the price in the market eventually just goes up and up as the, uh, the number of the actual uh, passes on the market go down and down so people actually take the time to do this and if you have a Vanguard pass you're almost at $97 of value right there other passes obviously dropping off significantly but still the Operation Hydra our last operation pass has still gone up significantly in price so for all of you guys out there who are looking for a two to three year investment I thought it was pretty cool you can actually see a lot more money returned to you by investing in operation passes than in actual skins now off that we also had community questions thank you all of you guys I've had quite a few episodes without answering some of these questions so thank you for all submitting these down below all you have to do is comment a question if it gets thumbs up I'll most likely screenshot it and actually add to the collection so those two questions for this episode were first of which where is CSGO lounge a lot of you guys wanted to know this and just to you know outright tell you all they actually declined to respond to this I actually reached out to them to give us an update on what the website is doing for the future and CSGO lounge is practically dead I mean there's really nothing you can do on there there's no deposit they actually still have a betting system you can actually bet their coin currency on their website but there's no actual way to get more of that coin currency there's no deposit for that on top of that though their trading is pretty much dead it's all bots it's all scammers we've had anomaly and McSkillet other youtubers out there make videos about this CSGO lounge is absolutely dead I think their owners are actually tied to Fano bet so they're okay with the website being dead I don't think anyone wants to use it anymore and again you're gonna get trades like this or or trade offers like this on screen so really kind of a worthless service let me know if you guys actually still do use CSGO lounge I'm sure it's good for some trades but I think there's a lot better websites out there for trading and you might as well go to the forums at that point now on top of that a second question though this guy actually asked me where is TSM and of course on top of that he also asked me where is Winter Fox now TSM they actually sold their roster off to Team Misfits a long time ago they're still remaining a North American roster TSM though has not yet announced a new one kind of surprising because they've seen success in other esports we would have thought TSM might have a new North American roster coming in sometime soon it seems not likely on top of that though more mysteriously Team Winter Fox is actually now their entire roster has left they now play as a team known as Animal Squad interesting story there because their former owner I've talked about this in previous episodes you guys probably forgot about this the former Winter Fox owner actually left all those four members that are still on that roster that still play for Animal Squad they left four of their members stranded in Australia a long time ago he wasn't paying their monthly wage and he couldn't afford to bring to fly them back and he abandoned the entire project and all those players were stuck in Australia for quite some time during the last few weeks of ESL Pro League so that's where Winter Fox is he also asked me where Tempo Storm is and you guys saw yesterday's video Tempo Storm announced two brand new CSGO rosters which is really cool to see and finally for our last story bouncing off that I do want to talk about multicultural CSGO rosters and you guys please partake in this of the teams I know so far that have multicultural rosters or multi CSGO rosters we have LDLC we have Epsilon we have G2 and on top of that now we have Tempo Storm that's at least four teams out there that have you know one main team as well as a different team so Tempo Storm for example they have Brazilian team and as well as a European team LDLC has several different teams you know going back to blue and white and I think Epsilon are one of the, the two Epsilon or G2 actually have a French roster many people don't know about so if you guys know any other teams out there that have different multicultural rosters please comment down below and I will add them to the list and very last in today's episode of CSGO News if you guys do tune into my CSGO News live streams every once in a while I'll tell you guys secrets or things that are coming up in CSGO News I actually knew about this last week but Luke officially tweeted out this yesterday night he has officially been signed by Team Envious as a part of their stream team I knew about this earlier he actually DM me and talked about it for all you guys who are wondering it's actually not for near as much money as you might think it's for a very small amount but definitely enough to keep him going so congratulations to Loop the partially blind and deaf CSGO streamer has now officially been signed by Team Envious and they took forever to finally sign him so congratulations there and very last for today's episode of CSGO News I do want to talk to you guys about my friend Mario many of you guys probably remember this story I'll be touching on this probably one last time when it actually goes through but Mario is actually battling ESCA right now for $30,000 in referrals that he potentially has earned he's going to be taking them to court he has finally received a response from ESCA and they want to actually take it to legal action all the way to court and that does mean that yes Mario will actually have to have a lawyer and as of right now he actually needs to have some way to raise $10,000 to afford his lawyer so I'm going to try and figure out a way to actually help him out I don't know if I can actually do that on here but we're going to try and figure out a way guys as he does battle ESCA to actually try and get $30,000 in the referrals that he potentially earned either in the right way or not the right way the courts will decide and that's going to do it for today's episode of CSK News if you guys did enjoy please leave a like more importantly leave a comment down below so I can reply to you guys yesterday's video was flooded with Asian comments and I mean that not in a race not in any weird way you guys just I asked for you guys to respond and you guys did a lot of you guys were saying we love Asia a lot of you guys saying 
we don't like Asia. I, it was just really funny comments to read. A few of you guys were, were really not funny, said some really weird things. But anyway, I hope you guys all enjoy. As always, live, love, laugh, love. Remember, remember, I like you. I will see you guys all hopefully in a couple days. Remember, I like you. That's the outro. See you guys.